So, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this afternoon's session on uh, the new functionality that's just become available in Analyze Bus Open Data Service uh, so that you can now look at excess wait time. Um, we are recording this session um, and we'll make it available on the Artig YouTube channel over the next few days so you can uh, review what you've heard and seen and share it with colleagues who can't be with us live. We do want this to be as interactive as we can so please do feel free to use the chat function that's available and we'll pick up uh, comments and questions as we go and we'll do a Q&A at the end uh, to wrap things up. Um, so um, welcome for those of you who, who it's first time at an Arteg event. If you don't know who we are, we are a public transport technology stakeholder body that promotes the use of technology in public transport. And we've got members that range from uh, DFT all the way through to local authorities, uh, bus operators, suppliers and consultants and we develop technical standards uh, and run uh, events like this, produce guidance and training documents as well as working with government and policy makers to uh, promote public transport technology and standardisation to try and um, ensure that best practice is followed uh, in policy as much as we can. And we are active in European standards development as well as uh, the UK. So that's a quick brief thing about Artig. You've come here this afternoon to find out about the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. We have been running these <coughs> sessions with ITO and the Department of Transport now for nearly a year and we've got them the previous sessions available on YouTube and there's everything from introduction to uh, ABODs uh, and information for new users through to um, things about enhanced data analysis, on-time performance and quality reporting, uh, how to use it for bus service improvement plans reporting, um, something that uh, those of you that have been successful um, might want to review perhaps. Um, and then uh, the last uh, session on this that we had was on corridors, um, which was new at that point. This afternoon, we're going to uh, hear about excess wait time, which is the latest bit of functionality. Um, and I'm going to hand over to uh, Patrick from ITO, who are the um, developers of the tool for the department, um, to run through um, excess wait time and some of the new features. Welcome, Patrick. Great. Thanks, Tim. Uh, just bear with me a moment while I share my screen. Great. Well, um, first of all, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, like, like Tim says, we'll be uh, going through some introductions of Analyze Bus Open Data, going through some of the current features, and also going through the excess waiting time feature as well, which was uh, recently added. We'll uh, start off with some introductions. So, uh, Eta World, uh, we are um, the technical supplier and partner for the Bus Open Data Service and Analyze Bus Open Data. So, I'm Patrick Smallman. I'm one of the uh, support engineers here at Eta World and uh, working primarily on the comms and support of uh, Analyze Bus Open Data as well as some of our products outside of the Analyze Bus Open Data service. I'll uh, pass it over to Lisa. Thanks, Patrick. Um, I'm Lisa Wadley. I'm the support team lead at Eater World. Um, so I work closely alongside Patrick um, picking up any support queries on the Analyze Bus Open Data service. Um, Rich, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Hey, my name is Rich Taylor. I'm a product manager here at ETO World working on Analyze Bus Open Data. My role is mainly working with the engineering team to make it the best possible tool for supporting the national bus strategy. Great, thank you both. So uh, what we'll be covering, covering today in this webinar is uh, for those who haven't been here before, we will be giving an uh, introduction to Analyze Bus Open Data, what it does, what it currently entails. Um, so some of the current features, ones which were uh, added at the end of last year, ones which have been added more recently. And then I will be passing it over to Rich to go over the excess waiting time. So the performance of frequent services and the definitions of those. We'll then be going over what's next for Analyze Bus Open Data. And uh, I think Tim might have already highlighted, obviously we want this session as interactive as possible. And so if you could uh, post your questions in the chat box, uh, Lisa and Rich will uh, do their best to answer those questions while we're in the meeting. Uh, but if we're not, we will be uh, keeping the chat log so that we can uh, follow up any questions which uh, remain unanswered. So just to start with, some of you might have seen this schematic before, uh, but this is just to give an idea of the pipeline of analy Analyze Bus Open Data. So it will start with the data producers. Uh, so that will be the operators or the operators data agents publishing their data. So that will be scheduled or timetable data in the format of trans exchange to BODs. They will also be publishing their AVL uh, data. So their real time data to BODs via the Siri VM format. And also uh, there'll be a growing number of operators publishing fees to BODs as well in NetEx. So once that, that data is in BODs, we then pull that in. So we have that uh, into our system through the integrated transit model, which is our system for the scheduled timetable data. And that is then matched with the real time data. And we archive this to produce the historical analysis that you can find in ABOD. As well as that, the data that we do receive, we handle and, and export that to BODs as well. So that from a consumer perspective, you know, if there's someone who is looking to develop an application or wants to carry out investigations on the data that's available, they can do so in raw format. They can download data for a specific operator, or uh, they can do it in different formats as well, such as GTFS and GTFS RT. And as well as that, there are options to download it via the API, which you can download in, in uh, a few different ways so that depending on what data you want, you, you can get that. And then obviously the other kind of consumer aspect is analyzed bus open data. So we have the AVL feed monitoring, we have alerts, schedule adherence, reporting and analytics, and uh, we'll be covering what exactly that entails uh, shortly. So the aims of Analyze Bus Open Data, it's a part of DFT's ongoing investment in bus services. We hope and uh, aim to for it to support the national bus strategy. So this is partly what, what Rich has been focusing his efforts on, is making sure that the service uh, helps with uh, EPs as well as BSIPs as well. So we hope that it'll help government, local authorities and operators to perform existing bus data analysis in faster and easier ways. Historically, we know that uh, previous investigations have involved uh, people on the ground uh, doing, you know, doing reports uh, at a stop or at several stops and from a resourcing and wider perspective, obviously, there needs to be a better overview and scope with data driven analysis to support to support those findings. Uh, we hope that it'll produce more accurate and detailed performance analysis reports, improve uh, the cab collaboration between different organizations. So even ourselves through our experience of interacting with local authorities and operators, we feel that it's raised a lot of really useful comms around the data, the data quality, what we're seeing in the service. And we hope that that's the same for those organizations as well identify network opportunities and inform transport policy and compliance monitoring across the industry. 
So in terms of who uh, analyzed bus open data is available to, so unlike BODS, we know that BODS is publicly available data for anyone to retrieve. Um, the analysis and historical data that you can derive from analyzed bus open data is only available to operators, local authorities, DVF, DFT, DVSA, and the OTC. Um, in addition to that, there, there can be uh, kind of outside cases whereby a, a organization such as an operator or local authority has invited someone on, on, on their behalf and that's regarded as authorization to the service. So they're granting access to that historical data, but that is obviously not something in which uh, we do. So all the users have or should ha have access to the national operator codes that are relevant to them. We do know that there can obviously be cases where a local authority or an operator has access to perhaps an operator which isn't relevant to them. And if there is any operators which you feel are, are clogging uh, your view or uh, kind of making an impact on the overall on-time performance of your organization, then do just let us know. And uh, as well as that, if there is an operator which you feel is missing from your view, then please, please just let us know. And uh, there'll be an email that uh, appears in the slide deck shortly. And so we want to also reiterate that there is a consistent view uh, for operators, local authorities and the DVSA. So an operator who's viewing the various features in ABOD, a local authority won't have additional features that they have access to. Every, every organization has a view of the same features. And then also uh, a useful part is that it is a free to use service uh, that's available for operators contributing uh, the necessary scheduled and real time data to BODS. So in terms of how we've gone about designing and building a BOD, it is very data, uh, very user research driven. Uh, since uh, middle of 2020, we have been holding a number of interviews, testing sessions, workshops, uh, strategy and policy workshops, and we've kind of kept those ongoing. We've done uh, further uh, workshops and, and sharing sessions early last year. And uh, since March last year, we have been doing a number of feedback and feature request sessions as well. So I think even the, the figures that I have there uh, for March 2021 to present is probably outdated by now. So the figures are probably higher than that. Um, but we've also following that feedback have added uh, the data export, uh, corridor and route segment analysis and a few other uh, enhancements to the service as well. And uh, as, as, as Lisa suggested in terms of uh, offering support in kind of ticket queries and inquiries, uh, we do handle um, a number of user support requests as well. So since the launch, uh, we've seen a really, really uh, good uptake. Um, and it's great to see that the, the monthly growth is still is still going up. So we now have approximately 500 users on the service. Uh, we have over 230 organizations uh, whereby there is a user that is uh, accepted an invitation and is uh, and has logged into the service of, of their organization view. Uh, we have approximately 140 operators on the service, as well as DFT, DVSA, and now approximately 90 local authorities as well. So again, how to get access. So firstly, operators must provide uh, timetable and AVL information to BODS. Uh, this is the email that I was email address that I was referring to. Uh, if there is any uh, problems with the organization view or whether you need to request access to the service. So you'll uh, receive an invitation uh, that will last or uh, is active for 72 hours uh, due to security reasons. Uh, it can't be any longer than that. And if it for whatever reason expires and you've not been able to accept in time, then just uh, send an email uh, to bus open data and uh, we will send another one through to you. And as well as that, if there are any issues, uh, say if, for example, you're having an issue resetting your password or you're not able to log back in, then we can uh, fix that for you as well. 
So I'm going to give a uh, run through of some of the features that we have within Analyze Bus Open Data. Uh, I'll probably cover a couple of the new features as well and slight tweaks and amendments that we've made. Uh, and then I'll be passing it over to Rich afterwards to go through excess wait time. So probably a page you're quite, quite familiar with uh, is the dashboard. And so again, all operators or organizations will have the same view. Obviously, they might be, you know, organizations that have more operators or you just have the view of your operator only. And so from this page, you can get a idea of the overall on-time performance within your organization. So if you are a local authority, the figures that we're looking at here is the on-time performance for those operators combined. And you can, you can alter that whether you want to look at Let's say, for example, you know that there was a series of, of summer schedule changes or school service changes across operators in your view. You can see how that's affected the on-time performance. You also get a view of the best and, and least performing uh, routes uh, within, within, that, within that view. So again, if you're just a, a, a single operator, you'll just be looking at your, your top and, and lowest performing routes. And so if we go over to uh, the feed monitoring. So at, at, on this page, again, if you're a local authority, you will probably have uh, several or more operators within your view. And you'll be able to see the feeds in which have uh, existing or active analysis. And so right now you can see that there's a few operators which are inactive. Uh, just to just to try and add clarity to this, uh, the idea of an inactive feed is a is a very temporary state. And so, what this means is, when a there is a vehicle journey within your organisation that's expected to be running at this time, but there's no AVL updates matching to that scheduled journey, then this will then be moved to an inactive feed, and it will be reactivated the moment there is an, a, a single vehicle update in the real time that matches to a scheduled journey. So if there's a very low number of scheduled journeys um, and there's, there's no matching for those very small number of journeys, it will go to inactive. But the moment there is um, some form of matching for a vehicle journey, that will return back to an active feed. So we have the feed availability, so that's the overall time and uh, I guess, yeah, the overall time in which the feed has been available during uh, during it since it's been in, since it's been in Analyze Bus Open Data. And so that's why you could have a feed availability of 100 percent, but that it, that feed is actually temporarily inactive. As well as that, in terms of uh, in terms of a single feed for an operator, you have the update frequency, and so we would hope to receive updates from a feed every thirty, at least for every thirty seconds. And so this is a, a good place to look and see how those operators are performing in terms of receiving updates from from the vehicles. And then you have the outage time as well. So once a feed is dropped, it will be able to tell you for how long that 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 operator has been unavailable for. And then below then you also have the uh, view of active feeds. And if you are an organization which has a very large number of, of operators, then you can edit and type in to, to define which operator that you'd like to view. So in terms of the on-time performance page, again, this is a really good way to get an overview of the operators within your organization. So you have the total number of departures, and this is one of the additions showing all of the number of departures rather than just percentage. And so you can get an idea of the number of departures that were on time, on time being any time where a departure is between one minute early and five minutes and 59 seconds late. And that's uh, in line with the definitions from the Department of for Transport and OTC. And then same again, you have the overall percentage of late in your organization. So that's uh, any time where departure is greater than five minutes and 59 seconds late. 
And then the definition for early is where departures from the stop were more than one were more than one minute early. So we've uh, recently we have added the national operator code to this view, um, similarly to what we saw in the feed monitoring. And this is just simply a four digit code that is uh, attached to, to, to an operator's data, but, but defines the operator and is very integral to the matching that, that we produce. And so uh, just, just, uh, just to give a bit of a clear idea of what operator you are looking at from a data-driven data perspective. And again, you can alter this, this page. You can look at the last seven days. You can use the, the custom custom date picker and also if you wanted to say look at the last month across all your operators you might also want to define it so that you're only looking at it from a Monday to Friday perspective so it could be a rush hour could be a rush hour problem which you want to investigate across operators and you can define that through the filters as well. So what we're looking at here now, we have kind of gone from that kind of wide overview to the uh, single operator. And so from here, you can start to begin at looking at the route by route on time performance. And so if you want to look at the last 28 days, again, you can just alter Vista as you wish. You can even define it by, so once you've looked at um, the Monday to Friday, you might want to see how they're performing during rush hour. And from here, you might want to get an idea of the total distribution for late, on time and early. And so this will tell you the number of stop departures uh, that have been recorded. So you can see here the number of stops and obviously this is uh, real time data. So this is real time departure uh, driven analysis. And so you can take a look at to see how well or how many departures fit within that on time category and how many uh, fall outside of it. So obviously on this chart, you would like to see this really uh, healthy steep curvature. And again, we've got the time of day here. So as as we just looked at, we've uh, altered this, this filter so that we're only looking at the hours that we're concerned with. And so you can edit that as you wish as well. And the same thing you can you can alter those to remove whatever days you wish. So from here now, we've selected a few different options and a few of you might have seen this page quite a lot already, but just to give another breakdown, you can filter this by the number of departures. And so if you wanted to focus your efforts on services that have a very high number of, of journeys, that's where you begin you know, focusing your investigations. You can define it by the total number of scheduled departures by most or least. Same goes with the percentage of recorded departures. And so you can see there's actually a service here. So if I click that, so we've got it ordered in lowest percentage of uh, departures recorded to the highest. And you can see here, there's a route that doesn't have any matching. So that might be a point in which you want to investigate further into. You have the average delay as well for a route. So with, on average, the number of seconds or minutes um, under or over on average that it, de it departs from the stop. And once you look at this, you might want to move from all stops. So currently the system defaults to all stops, but from a reporting perspective, you might only be concerned with timing points. And so we can move that to the timing points as well. And the same thing, you can do this through on time, late or early. So one item which is uh, part of our latest latest release is uh, one which uh, I know that a few of you have been asking for for quite some time. And so that's the export data option. And so now you'll be able to export this information, open it in a CSV. And if you was to look, want to look at it on, on Excel, then you'll be able to do so. 
and you'll have that defined. And so just to clarify on this in terms of frequent, so that's for the frequent services, which Rich will be going through shortly. And the reason why that currently shows false is because there aren't any frequent services for this operator. So if you do see false in that frequent column in the export data, it just means that the services that you're viewing aren't, 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 aren't frequent in definition. So that's the on-time performance page. We'll just take a look at uh, the corridors feature as well before I hand it over to Rich. And so what the corridors feature allows you to do is to analyze a series of stops, whether whether it's you know one service that you want to pay particular attention to, it will actually highlight to you several other services. So uh, for example, if we just picked any four stops, that will show the corridor that you create will highlight every single route or service pattern that goes through those four stops. So to create to create a, a new corridor, you just simply have to type in the corridor name. This could be um, this could be through the, the actual stop name that, that you know of, or it could be the ATCO code as well if you if you know what the the stop the stop number ID is. If we do victory hall, so that's where it's beginning from. So you might you might not know the stop name in question. Uh, sorry, the, the at co code in question. You might only know the stop name, uh, and obviously you you you'll know roughly where in which the area of that stop is. And so you can begin to kind of zoom in on where you want to begin your investigation and say it's a stop. In Exeter, you might want to look at that stop, and then you can begin to add in the following sequence of stops then as well. And you can do this currently up to 10 stops, and hopefully that can then give you uh, indications of whether there is congestion due to a roundabout. It could be um, an issue where the actual congestion begins further upstream. So when you look at the corridor that you've created, there might be um, it might be going through that, that corridor very quickly. And so these are some of the figures that you'll be able to, to pull from a created corridor. And so what we're looking at here, and again, this is, this is configurable to whatever day or month or whether it's over a quarterly period, if you want to look at that. So we've got the total number of total transits here. And so this is the real time information. So this is all of the vehicles that have passed through these four stops. And so you can alter this so that you only view the first stop. So between, between Helford Passage Turn and Trevor Gardens. So you can do, you can do flick between various stops to see how the average time changes. So if I, go back to the, if we look at the next stop for instance you might want to see where those pinch points lie so if for example we were looking at the average journey time here and it was much greater than you expected you'll be able to look between each stop to see where that congestion or that long average journey time started so the total number of services like i was saying before uh, this will highlight all the routes uh, related to you that pass through these four stops. And so this is actually a breakdown of the total number of service patterns. And by a service pattern, we can look down here. So we're actually, the information that we're looking at at the moment is only one line. So we're looking at the number 35 line and it is broken down by service pattern. And the reason for that is because the service pattern that begins from Falmouth might be running really quickly. It might be running as expected, but then a service pattern of the same line might be operating from Helston and has a much greater average journey time. And that might be able to help I start to begin getting that granular information to understand why overall the number 35 service uh, seems to have poor on-time performance. And so, yeah, average journey time, fairly, fairly self-explanatory, but that's just the average time taken for a bus to move through the corridor according to the real-time information received. 
and then we have the number of missing transits so the number of journeys in the timetables provided that do not have real-time information recorded against them so from this journey time page uh, again you'll be able to get if you if you moved it down to a week uh, or a month you'll be able to get those day by day results and so what we have also added just to give a better idea on what these what each kind of level of the bars represents. So we have the minimum, obviously we have this bottom figure here, and that's just the lowest, the lowest journey time recorded for a vehicle for that day. So we had a minimum on the 4th of April, that a journey a vehicle was able to pass through this corridor in one minute and 42 seconds. Opposite to that, then we have the, we have the maximum, so uh, that's just obviously again the same, similar to the meet minimum, but except the the longest time it took for a vehicle to pass through the corridor. We have the mean, so just the average, and so you might not be able to see it as clearly on this day, but you can see on this one just that that dark line here, and then the the bars here, and then the bars here. So that's the twenty fifth percentile, and then the bar above the mean is the seventy fifth percentile. We also have uh, the time of day as well. And again, this could be really helpful, like if you're looking at say an urban route or the same to that, just any route, a rural route that has perhaps uh, like a running event or a regular event in which typically causes congestion, you might be able to identify then the hours in which this route is worst affected by that. Same thing again, so we're looking at the at the, at the last month, so the last 28 days, um, and this is just giving a breakdown by the day in which that those services operate in. So this again, it might be able to tell you that journeys through this section perform really well on a Monday to Friday, but for whatever reason, some some circumstances um, cause it to to operate uh, slower on a Saturday or Sunday. So. Like we were saying, this is broken down by service pattern. So depending on the corridor that you've created, there could be a lot of service patterns here that will be able to give you um, some further information about why why a service might be running slow or running too quickly through this corridor. Uh, it could give you an indication that the uh, issue actually lies before the corridor. And so you can, again, you can just start to be begin creating as many corridors uh, with, with up to 10 stops as you wish to try and find out where that lies. And then for each service pattern, you have the average time journey breakdown as well. And as well as this, you do have the scheduled transit. So it's just saying for the past month for this service pattern, we had uh, 166 transit so 166 vehicles expected to pass through this corridor during that month and that's for just the number of those uh, expected journeys that we had real time recorded and matched with so i believe that's all of the uh, features to cover uh, at the moment in terms of like you know the highlights of those features uh, so i will pass it over to rich now to cover the excess waiting time I just thanks Patrick um, as you all know we're here also to talk about the excess waiting time functionality that we've just added to a board for frequent services um, frequent services are as we probably all know a major pillar of the national bus strategy um, the idea being that um, wherever possible particularly on uh, main major urban routes um, we move to the provision of services which run so frequently that passengers can just turn up and go. They don't necessarily need to rely on a timetable. And this is mentioned a lot in the literature uh, relating to the national bus strategy. It's one of the um, key assessment criteria of bus service improvement plans. So it's mentioned in the mark sheet for that as well. But to a passenger on the ground, if a service is running so frequently that they can just turn up, they're no longer concerned with delay. If they happen to miss a bus, it shouldn't really matter because another one will be following it shortly. And if you've got so many buses in circulation on the route that that's the case, to, as I said, to a passenger on the ground, um, we really need some other quality indicator to 
um, say how well the service is performing. On-time performance doesn't really make sense anymore. And so excess waiting time is that quality service indicator. So when we say a service is frequent, we mean that it provides six or more buses per hour. And excess waiting time is essentially a measure of um, how well it's meeting that published headway. You know, it tells you how long on average a passenger at a stop um, would have to wait due to irregular headways or buses which fail to run. And so how do we calculate this? Um, well, it's a bit of a simplification. Um, if you think about uh, passengers turning up on a stop, chances are that they do have some uh, prior knowledge of the, the service, which means that actually the uh, distribution of passengers arriving at a stop will be skewed slightly towards when buses are expected to arrive. Um, but of course, that's going to vary from context to context. So a reasonable simplification is that the average time that a passenger be, will be waiting is uh, half the observed interval between buses. And so you can calculate excess waiting time by just subtracting the scheduled waiting time. So half the scheduled interview interval between buses from the actual waiting time. So what does this look like in ABOD? Well, if I switch over to ABOD, in the on-time performance section of the tool, for operators that provide frequent services, if I scroll down to the services table, um, services which have some period of frequent running in the filtered time interval will be marked with this little frequent service reticule. And this can be sorted to bring all of the frequent services for that operator to the top of the table. As Patrick mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, whether or not that service has some period of frequent running in the selected time window will also be shown in the exported CSV as well. If I take a look at one of these frequent services, on this uh, timeline, there will now be a toggle. Selecting excess waiting time on this toggle will switch the timeline to excess waiting time. What this will graph is the uh, expected and actual waiting times and the excess as this shaded difference between the two. The graph will also tell us the number of hours out of the total service hours in the selected window that the service had some period of frequent running. And as an extra headline met metric, it will also tell us the um, average excess waiting time for all stops on the service. What we're hoping is together this excess waiting time figure and this proportion of service hours for which the service was running frequently will help bus operators and local authorities to work together to improve the provision of frequent services. Um, it's obviously mentioned as a important part of a lot of the bus service improvement plans. So the direction we take this in next will really depend on the feedback that we get. So please do make use of this new area of the tool. Um, have a play with it and let us know what your thoughts are. As for what's next for ABOD, um, we have a couple of things coming up next on the roadmap. Um, the first is that we want to give local authorities and bus operators the ability to have a look at performance summary stats by um, administrative area. Uh, the reason we want to do this is because currently in ABOD, the uh, high level performance statistics are for operators at the national level which is great, but if you're thinking about the performance of an operator or a group of operators in the context of a bus service improvement plan, um, it's really necessary to um, have a look at the performance together of the routes which just touch the geographical boundary of your administrative area. And so we, what we want to do is provide the ability to look at these rolled up statistics for either an individual administrative area or a group of administrative areas in the NUPTO hierarchy. Another thing we want to do next is to add speed information to ABOD. Um, 
the corridor was area of the tool is a great starting point for uh, trying to identify pinch points in your network by making use of whatever distance information is available in the source data for the routes which buses are following from to stop to stop. What we want to do is expose that as uh, stop to stop speeds in the corridor area of the tool. And by doing this, we're hoping that we'll help local authorities to understand where particular pieces of infrastructure might be impacting bus performance um, and also give them the ability to you know, maybe put forward cases for including bus priority on a particular route section. We're also hope, helping that by adding speed information uh, will help operators to understand how speed varies by time of day and perhaps use that to optimize their service schedules as well. And that's it from us. Um, thank you all for your time. I think now would be a good time to address any questions, um, if any have come up in the chat box. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, we do We do have a couple of questions. Uh, so the first one uh, from Aidan Proctor at uh, Omnibus. So uh, Aidan's asked, do you determine a frequent service based upon reading the timetable data or if it is set as frequent in the trans exchange file? So uh, I, I believe uh, I believe from from my knowledge that is actually based upon reading the timetable data and it doesn't have to be specified specifically within the trans exchange. I don't know if you had a firm answer to that one, Rich. Yeah, that's right. And the reason for that is there are services which will only run frequently for particular periods. So we derive that from the timetable rather than from a flag in the source. Thanks, Rich. Uh, we have another question then from Greg, and that is, is the data available to bus services in Northern Ireland? Uh, so I believe I can answer that one. Um, from from my knowledge, I don't believe there's any data or uh, bus data published to the Bus Open Data Service, and so therefore there isn't any historical analysis uh, created in ABOD. Uh, obviously, operators aren't aren't legally obligated to publish uh, bus data to to BODs from Northern Ireland. Uh, it is uh, with England only, but um, although there's only an obligation for operators to publish data to BODs from England, there are operators in Scotland and Wales that do publish data to BODs and, and therefore could, in theory, get analysis in ABOD as well. So I hope that answers your question, Greg. Uh, Tim, so you noticed earlier that a bus route was showing as having an on-time performance of 0%. Is this likely to be an error? And if so, what is the possible cause of this? I believe it was the 82 between Bilston and Dudley. So yes, there is the possibility of 0% on-time performance. And the reason for that essentially being, Tim, was that for the date that was selected, there wouldn't have been any um, there wouldn't have been any departures recorded. So for that instance, which I, bl I believe that was when I was sharing my screen, uh, that was actually 0% recorded departures as well. So that is essentially just a route whereby there was no uh, real time to match with the scheduled data. So you can have routes in view. And so we hope that that is a good way of uh, kind of identifying, uh, you know, something that's perhaps a uh, data issue or perhaps data that's missing or an issue whereby the data quality causes there to be no matching. Uh, so they can be they can be services with 0% on time performance. Uh, Chris said in the uh, excess waiting time example, it showed 10% were not observed. So would that affect the excess waiting time? Uh, that's a good question, Chris. Uh, I, as far as I'm aware, I think if there is no observations, it wouldn't affect the excess waiting time. But Rich, uh, would you like to firm that one up? Yeah, that's right. So um, if no departure was observed, then that wouldn't contribute towards the uh, excess waiting time metric. Yeah. So it's sim similar to, to the on-time performance. If there was no uh, 
if there wasn't a recorded departure for the on-time performance, that wouldn't in any way contribute to the percentages uh, of, of on-time performance in the service. Uh, just to mention as well, before we do finish up for the session, uh, Lisa's just put a message in the chat. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback, um, you know, feedback on, on the current features, feedback on the latest uh, additions and what we have what we have in store or what you would like to see in store on, on our roadmap in the future. Uh, we really, really do uh, appreciate uh, your feedback. And so feel free to fill in the survey and, and beyond that, also feel free to, to email us as well if you do have any other thoughts. So I think it looks as though the questions are slowing down a bit, Tim. Uh, so I'll, I'll just pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Um, looks uh, very useful. Um, functionality now that's uh, that's available so um given as you say um questions have um dried up um there is um a um page on the artig website abod which gives links to all the previous events um that we've had the recordings for those so if you want to, uh, to, to, to review any of those, bob onto that um, and have a play. Um, we um, have a webinar on the 25th of May, um, which is going to look at bus priority at traffic lights for Arctic members and non-members can join for a uh, small fee. Um, that's going to look at how you uh, would configure that, what you need to do as a bus operator, what you need to do as a local authority and how it works. Um, something that uh, just like um, high frequent services uh, appears an awful lot in BSIPs. Um, so that's coming up at the end of May. Um, and if you want to find out any more about the work of Artig, um, got any questions um, or either about Artig or about ABODs, I can pass those on to uh, to the ETO team. Um, please do feel to, free to get in touch. Um, I think that's everything for this afternoon. Thank you for joining um, and look forward to seeing you on another call or in person very soon. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.